not, you know what, it's not my, <laughs> it's not really my uh, place to make any prophecies about, you know, the direction of the label. The, the, the remarkable thing about it is that um, it has existed this long and it remains meaningful, not to me, but to contemporary hip hop loving youth in particular. Mm -hmm. And there have been a succession of, uh, there has been a succession of uh, chief executives and staff who have worked to keep the label relevant and they mm -hmm. continue to sign new talent. And uh, that new talent is going to reinvigorate the label over and over again and keep it meaningful. There's a reason, you know, that kind of, uh, which I call it institutional memory, that kind of devotion to Def Jam's original mission is why there is a book in 2011 and the label itself continues to survive mm -hmm. because you know people like Lior Cohen and then Kevin Lyles and, and, and Julie Greenwald and uh, Jay-Z became president of the label for a while. Uh, these are folks who uh, embodied the Def Jam ethos and the Def Jam legacy, Def Jam's values, and it's because of them that there is a Def Jam today still. Did, did, I, did I think that Def Jam would, you know, survive this long? I'll say this, you know, one of the stories from telling the book, I mean, if you read, you know, it's, it's not, it's, I'd say it's between the lines, but it's really the, 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 the future of the label uh, has been in jeopardy more than once. I mean, there was a period after Rick left and before uh, Lee or Cohen took over formally as the head of the label several years between 1988 and, and 1992, 1993, the label could have gone belly up. And uh, the label was very cold. And if it had gone belly up during that period, it wouldn't have been remarkable. What's remarkable is that it has survived. And it, and it served, uh, survived, as I said, because, you know, Really notably, Lior, Lior has been crucial in this process. You know, Lior Cohen, let me say a word about Lior. Lior is somebody who came to the label as um, a road manager for Run DMC. That's really what he did to begin with. And then uh, he did it so well that uh, Russell uh, gave him more and more responsibility. And pretty quickly, Lior was running the artist management side. He was running Rush. So he was there very, very early on, and he continued to do that through the 80s, and it wasn't until, I don't know, maybe until 92, 93, that Russell said, okay, Leor, you're the, you're the head of Def Jam now. Um, and that was crucial. I mean, that was a, a, a turning point because uh, Leor uh, was imbued with the values of Def Jam and he was determined to turn around the label's fortunes, mm -hmm. and he put together a tremendous executive team in that period, and he managed to do what he wanted to do, which is to uh, revive the label and resurrect the label and uh, make it relevant yet again. And he did all of that. He and his, his colleagues and his team did all of that. And I, I'd say of any uh, single individual, uh, you know, after Rick and Russ, you know, Lior is undoubtedly the most important person in the history of the label. Mm. Cool. That is, who's not an artist. Right, right, right. <laughs> Let's be clear. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, um, uh, I, I don't know Irv personally. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, uh, you know, a pretty good idea about what he accomplished when he was at Def Jam. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a lot of respect for him. And... Um, you know, it makes as much sense to me. I mean, I, I don't know who the other candidates are, <laughs> you know, for whatever it is, president of Def Jam yeah. now. But I think, you know, Irv might be, uh, you know, might, might do a wonderful job. I, you know, it's, he's, not, uh, he's not a far-fetched candidate to me. I'll say this also, you know, um, at the topmost level right now, pretty recently, they brought in Barry Weiss to replace L.A. Reid. Uh, Barry's a guy who also goes way, way back in this rap music business, you know. He was running Jive Records here in America by 
82 or 83. Mm -hmm. You know, we managed Houdini. Houdini recorded for Jive. And so, you know, we know Barry going back at least that far. And he, uh, he's been a very, very successful record executive for a long time. So, you know, I, I, I was happy to hear that Barry got the job that he got. And you bring in Irv Gotti besides, that's mm -hmm. interesting. That might be a wonderful one-two punch. Um, one of the single most gratifying and surprising things about the publication of this book is that there's a French language edition of it. And I couldn't have predicted it. <laughs> that certainly had nothing to do with it. Uh, the book is published in America by Rizzoli, which is really um, the company I think is based in Italy. And they, they have uh, contacts all, all over the world. I think there must have been a time when they went to, uh, you know, one of the giant book fairs, maybe in Germany, and they talked to other would-be publishers about whether they wanted mm -hmm. an edition of their own. And this uh, French gentleman, Pierre-Henri Verlhac, <laughs> um, stepped up. He's got a, he's got a, a publishing imprint called the, the Verlhac Edition, mm -hmm. and he said, I want to put this out in French. And so he did. And you know, it, it's out uh, in France, formally published as of tomorrow, you know, uh, October 14th, 2011.